we put a deposit down for 100 Tesla units when they first announced, and these will be some of the first 15 units that we put into operation here in Modesto as part of the grant program. Our average distribution um, range is about 400 miles. Um, so these are designed and we're continuing to work with Tesla and partnering with getting it to the right range. But we believe that this technology will meet our needs in our distribution network. So we have new, new technology and we don't operate today. And then we are replacing older diesel technology with new battery electric or near zero emission uh, natural gas. Thanks for joining us once again. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please take time to like and subscribe. If you'd like better tips and ideas on better investing and trading, please join us on Patreon. Uh, we have daily shows there that'll help you keep abreast of everything. As you saw from our opening today, we were focused on the Tesla Semi today. As you know, it's a hugely exciting vehicle. And as I look at our model right here, um, there's a whole bunch of issues that are they're trying to work out right now. Uh, we actually had uh, the side view mirrors are supposed to be here, but as you'll notice, the camera uh, here is one of the reasons why the vehicle has been slowed down. It turns out that uh, the government is not real thrilled with the whole idea of no side view mirrors, and it's a minor issue, but uh, a change that Tesla has been forced to make in order to be compliant with government regulation. So our goal today was to take a look at where are we uh, on the Tesla Semi, the myth versus the reality. Now, the reality is that, as you know, there are three vehicles at this point, approximately three vehicles that have been delivered to Pepsi. Now, this is a kind of an interesting situation because the production capability of the new facility is alleged to be between 500 and 1,000 vehicles a month. That's actually a pretty good clip. So the big issue that's going on is, uh, what's the difference between the myth and the reality of the Tesla Semi currently? So I got a, as we were preparing for this show over the last month or so, I've had several conversations with friends at Tesla and other entities to kind of get a arms around what's going on here. And there's this gap between what the reality is and what the myth is. So we're leaning towards the reality because the current news of, you know, for example, there's news out about the pricing and the types of vehicles that will be offered. Now, I think that's terrific it should be a reality because there's an announcement related to it. As you saw in the video from, uh, you know, the folks at Pepsi, they have an initial order in for a hundred units, but their target is somewhere around 3000 vehicles. So the Pepsi manager you saw there indicated that, uh, for the target range that they deliver to, they actually need about 400 miles of range. So is that 400 miles to get there? Is that 400 miles um, total for that vehicle? You know, there are a whole bunch of questions there and he indicated that they were making modifications on that. So it's my belief, you know, that the, the difference between the customer statement and the company statement is gonna come in here. And so it's my belief that Tesla will likely keep the configurations uh, of batteries and the mileage for each of the vehicles and simply strategically place superchargers next to facilities so that as the trucks unload at the destination, they can charge at the same time, allowing Tesla not to have to modify what it's doing truck-wise and make sure that the customer receives kind of the performance they need to do what they need to do. The Tesla myth in reality is also interesting to watch here because yes, Tesla just announced pricing and the types of vehicle. If in fact, these vehicles are going to be delivered next year, how exactly do you guarantee what the pricing is going to be given that almost on a monthly basis, the commodity prices that affect battery packs, as well as even prices related to uh, our semi price is going to be higher or lower at the point. Um, cause has caused Tesla 
to change prices on its regular vehicles, the cars, all the time. So I'm suggesting that this is a, um, a suggested retail price and it's subject to change as we get closer to delivery based on what the real cost of everything is. Another mystery slash reality myth thing that's going on is most companies like Pepsi or Walmart or all these companies tend to work on three-year leases. So we can put a price tag on what their vehicle price would be and um, Tesla theoretically could lease with, a, with the core price being a certain number. But this is actually a strange, you know, question that's lurking as well. Tesla keeps talking about sell price and, uh, you know, large entities like this, um, based on good operations, tend to lease, not sell, so they can rotate through Hertz or Ryder or one of the other manufacturers or, or le big leasing companies to get the vehicles they need. And that's kind of what's been going on in California in terms of as fleets have been set up, it's been coming through partnerships with companies that allow these companies to lease these rather than them being purchased. So um, this creates some interesting confusion because Tesla's website as of last year, a year and a half ago, was saying that, you know, if you wanted to, if you're not among the first group of folks who ordered your vehicles right away, you would then be required to put down a $20,000 deposit and then you'd have 90 days to complete the full purchase price. So interesting, another point of myth or reality, kind of which is it? Is it a purchase? Is it a lease? Kind of doesn't matter how the customer uses it. Minor detail, but the major detail is Tesla gets to collect a lot of deposit money and prepaid money uh, for vehicles that help improve how the balance sheet looks. And so the other note here in terms of this back and forth of myth versus reality is that for the first year of production, from what we can estimate, um, if in fact most of these fleets are operating on three-year cycles for leases, that means that uh, Walmart needs a thousand, uh, PepsiCo needs a thousand, uh, UPS needs a thousand. Um, you get my drift here. We're going through a number of large entities that have large numbers of trucks and they were part of the initial group um, with their target being a hundred units because they didn't want to put out all that cash without there actually being vehicles available. So once these vehicles are available, it's my belief that the first people in the line are going to be those that put down the deposits and purchased. There are several small five to 10 to 20 orders from different companies. But in general, it's my sense the first year of production is gone uh, and, and Pepsi being the number one buyer of those vehicles. And this also brings up an interesting question, which is when you look at fuel costs and how expensive it is to run tractor trailers on your deliveries right now, it's not out of the question that some of these firms might decide if we're at the front of the line and we have our usual lease cycle out process, it would actually be cheaper for them potentially to actually tell Tesla, we want all 3000 vehicles in year one. That is our target number. And we'll work out the lease breaking process on other types of vehicles because it's so much cheaper to operate an electric vehicle than it is to operate diesel. And, um, you know, the operational reduction of costs um, makes it a no-brainer to go ahead and do this. So uh, stay tuned. As we get more information, we'll obviously update you on it. But, you know, this is an interesting situation. The final question that we wanted to pose and, and respond to is, wait a second, there are three supercharger, at least two superchargers installed, and we're now starting to install sort of mega chargers to support the semis initially now in Modesto and now spreading out into other Pepsi facilities as those trucks might need emergency power, particularly if they're running hills as they were doing their deliveries. And so we expect to start seeing semi uh, 
charging facilities installed. Now, the sort of next issue for this is um, Tesla has been installing uh, sort of mega pack support facilities definitely in Modesto, we could see that. And that was subsidized by the state of California. Um, if we're seeing those in other locations, that also tells us what's going on there. Um, the overall here that I would say is, it's great that we have the semi here. It's great that it's, it's starting to go to customers. Pepsi is sort of the guinea pig for structures that the state of California is willing to help fund as a way to reduce the amount of pollution. Another great point that, that's kind of come up. I really think just like with cars right now, Tesla has a shortage of vehicles based on how big the demand is. I think there is easily demand for 50 to 100,000 trucks a year like this. And Tesla is just starting up with its production facilities near the Reno uh, manufacturing space. But they are now charged with uh, ramping up a new facility for trucks and the Cybertruck right next to the new factory in Texas. This also brings up uh, another shortage issue, which is, as you know, full build out was only 10 megawatts uh, of, of capability or 10 gigawatts of capability at the initial production facility for the 4680 in Fremont. And we're now uh, getting a line put in and theoretically more lines put in in Reno to support the required battery for the semi to operate properly. So I believe that one of the holdups that, that puts us into next year before we start delivering is uh, how many uh, of the 4680 are available uh, that are not being used in uh, the current automobile side for use in the semis. And I think that there's gonna be scale availability next year that facilitates uh, this whole thing working better in terms of having enough for both cars and trucks at that point. Um, I, I'm excited. Uh, I, you know, it's nice to see. The one other sort of quick note that I wanted to point out is we were asking questions about, well, what's the difference between uh, 1.0 and 2.0 semis? And obviously the biggest difference is uh, the the battery packs that's being used. But there's no, given all the effort put into the aerodynamics of the new truck, 1.0 and 2.0 in 90% of the case is actually the same vehicle. We're seeing a white 2.0 or the, the delineation that we can easily pick up on right now is a 4680 is running a white uh, 2.0 version of the semi that is sort of everywhere these days. And um, we're seeing silver. Um, there couldn't be too much change there, otherwise you'd lose the aerodynamic uh, qualities of the vehicle. So we're not seeing that, but it's clear that, you know, there's some stair differences, et cetera, uh, that you can see. And we look forward to this vehicle being out there. Last note here is the fact that, yes, the truck is in operation, uh, at the Modesto facilities, but most of those deliveries are being done at night. So therefore we're not giving the, getting the usual day photos that we've gotten in the past to see the semi in operation, uh, actually doing pickups and deliveries. So we look forward to those of you who are sort of close to Pepsi facilities, you know, Modesto are the places where this vehicle is in motion, you know, to get some photos, photos of it in action and doing deliveries. So, in general, it's obvious that the semi is the most important vehicle when it comes to pollution reduction out there. It's great that Tesla is in operation. It's great that Pepsi has been willing to work through this long period of time before starting to get vehicles and sort of shifting loads to make sure that we can bring this vehicle into fruition. Uh, we'd just like to see it happen faster, obviously. The other you know, final note here perhaps is, to, is that um, yes, we're seeing the semi in action, but how is the semi competition with the delivery of vehicles that's going to work? It's the numbers are kind of interesting because a fully loaded plaid is a $200,000 vehicle. 
for talking trucks that are going to be between one fifty and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in price, it almost seems like based on what's going into it, I can see why the semi is delayed because it's a lot more lucrative to focus on on the needs of the uh, the auto side of the business before moving over to the trucks. So we'll keep you posted as we learn more information. Again, this is the first in a while for us on the semi. We expect to try to do a, a once a month or so show as we head into this. But as you've seen, the semi was supposed to be out, you know, three, uh, two or three years ago, and it's been delayed numerous times. But I do believe that the 4680, you know, really being put to work is what's going to make the difference between it existing and being delivered rather than not. And that's conf confirmed by all the charging facilities we see in Reno as well as in Modesto. So again, we look forward to your comments on this. We actually look forward to the truck arriving uh, next year. And um, we also look forward to perhaps getting some data or seeing some photos of what's going on with the Pepsi's uh, Modesto version of this. Special thanks to the folks at the Modesto B for footage related to uh, the Tesla Semi as you saw at the front end. And, um, you know, thanks for taking time out to, to uh, visit with us today. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. We now move to our health tips. Don't forget, prior to love making, a salad or something small limits the amount of uh, blood flow to the stomach, making that blood flow available to other portions of the body in your activities. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Choose German au revoir, French, Lee Heathrow, Hebrew, Hoda, Hefez, Farsi, Tarachi, Russian, Nihao, Ma, Chinese, Kambawa, Japanese, Hey Do, Swedish, Good Day, Australia. And in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk, good man. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day and bye for now.